Hey, this is Brooke Drum with Printerbot.com, and I'm going to show you how to do a four-star Z-Acme upgrade for your Z-Screw on your play. Uh, it comes with the proper length uh, Acme rod, and this Acme rod is kind of special. It has, let's see what size I need there. It has a little uh, coupler that's new. Um, the old one, I don't know if we use these small ones or these big ones, but if you have a big one like this, it's a different size set screw, and uh, it's a quarter inch. So we need to give you a five millimeter. Um, the reason we did this is we turned down the end of this so that it's completely centered. So you can just put that on there. It'll slide all the way down. You don't have to guess how deep it goes. It stops when it hits the metal. Tighten that up. Now the play, some people don't realize that it has only one Z-screw. So uh, there's only one to replace. But to get to it, it's back in here. Uh, we've got to do a little bit of digging. So the first thing I'm going to do is release the top, um, take off one side. So I'll do that first. Now I'm here alone on a Sunday night. I've mentioned this in the other videos uh, of the Z Acme upgrade and I'm relying on a cameraman that has failed me in the past, Brooke, myself. So I've, I've got a limited, I just put a manual focus because some of these cameras go in and out. So if I, uh, if some of your frame is out of focus, eh, maybe another part will be in focus. Now you can put this, <clears throat> you know, it'll, it'll go back here on the other side, I believe. In fact, I'm wondering if we do that. I don't know, it doesn't matter. But I'm taking the top off, so you'll hear the clutch. I don't t trust the clutch when tightening, but I do uh, crank it up a little bit when removing parts because you're not going to hurt it by unscrewing it. But when you screw it in, use uh, something to hand tighten. Okay, so the top should be free, and you notice I left the, uh, let's see, these three hold the little bar end on the top. It's quite tight. These are injection molded, uh, so just leave those there. All right, so we got parts coming off. Now, it's this side I want. So I will take them out of the bottom. You know you want one of these drills. Do not do this with a hand tool, for heaven's sakes. Totally worth it to get a, a drill. Although in my first video, I instantly ran out of battery. That's the annoyance. <clears throat> Trying to hurry. When I can, I like to do these instructional videos without cutting the tape. If I cut the tape, it's because it ran out of battery or it overheated or something. Okay, so now you can kind of see um, that the play actually relies um, just on the bearing on one side to keep it straight <laughs> and all of your mechanicals here uh, with the lead screw on this side is what pushes it up and down. So I can, I could pull these bars straight out, um, but I kind of want to leave them on there just for rigidity right now so I can show you which screws you need to take out. Now, when we use injection molded parts, we use a Phillips. They're called, uh, there's a name for them, what are they called? Uh, Plastite screws. Um, so, if it digs into plastic, you have to have special threads. Now, this particular one is a very long metric screw. If you look from the front, it's on your right. See how long that is? That goes into the corner motor. We use that little screw in the corner motor, but this one actually, I gotta stop saying actually. Um, this one is a little plastite screw that actually, ah, oh, I said it again. 
<laughs> it's the drinking game. Anyway, that one uh, goes into the plastic, so it's a lot shorter. Let's see if I can get that out. It's a different style screw. If you look at them from the front, you can't really tell the difference, but it's a little bitty screw. I don't know if you see that. That is on your left. Okay, so this is now loose. So I'm actually going to try to leave all the belts uh, just as they are. I want to try to disrupt this the least amount possible because if you start taking your belts off and all of that you get into a more detailed build so it just slides this way now when I take it out it's going to drop so be careful I want to remember the orientation of the part because it's going to go in the same way so put that aside oh, I've already forgotten how it went in okay it went in like that and if you don't remember it, the through hole, there's a, there's a hole, I don't know if the camera can see that, um, the through hole is on your right, and the plastic hole is on your left. So I will be able to do that. Okay, so I slid it in there. I'm looking at where my flat is on my motor to line up that set screw properly. Great, might as well get that tight while I'm here. I already tightened the top one. I'll double check though. I don't want to forget. Okay, that's that's plenty tight. Don't over tighten these. You can strip aluminum out. Not that I've ever done it. <laughs> okay, I have done it. All right. So there you go. Now it's pushing on the belt. It's it's like a pushing on the top belt right now. So it's kind of working. Um, but it's all lined up. It's moving real easy. I'm feeling good. So I can take my long screw. Find the hole, put this in. Man, I bet you could do this without even taking the top off, but I wanted the camera to be able to see what's up. Now, I'm not gonna tighten that down super tight yet because I wanna make sure that I can get into the plastite side. Very good. And that will stop. It's almost impossible to strip a plastite because your screwdriver won't get enough purchase to do it. But anyway, this, I want good and tight, but not, not too tight. Belt's still good. Everything seems to be aligned really well. So, we'll put it back together. I'll just check it. Yep, working great. Okay, whoops. Yeah, that's right. So, a couple of notes uh, when you do this upgrade. First one, uh, that you're gonna need to go in like with Repetti or something where you get access to that little command line thing where you can put in an M code. It's the same thing you did when you calibrated your, uh, your Z offset. Um, you got to put in an M code to change out your steps and we'll have notes. I don't want to show that because it's boring. I've got tutorials that already show that. Um, you can figure out that you just have to put a different steps per millimeter in there for this four start. What's cool is it'll be an even number uh, because it's metric. So you won't have to you won't have to worry about the fact that when I use the uh, quarter inch screw, you know a few people that are good at math better than me would point out that in some circumstances, in some layer heights, there's a drop decimal and Marlin doesn't do that, well, blah, blah, blah. Stuff that you may not care about. And I never saw a difference in, I think the proof is in the pudding. I never saw a difference between my settings on my, my uh, standard English quarter inch Acme. But I like this metric for several reasons. It's four start. All right, all the bottoms together, put the top back on. It's four start, it's um, faster, <clears throat> which I really like. All right, I gotta get down here. Come on, there it goes. Went down a little too far, I gotta pull it back up. I like to try to line the holes up as best I can. So I'm not digging in the metal trying to find the screw holes. Alright, and yeah. 
Sure enough, you can put this on the back other side. It's here or here. I don't know why it was there before. But anyway, um, so it's faster, it's better math, so on a, on a very technical level, metric Acme screws are a better idea. Why didn't I do that in the first place? Ah, I don't really know. Probably cost. I could get the other ones locally. Uh, but over time, it's five years later <laughs> than I, when I started. And I've used, all the way back, I used threaded rod. Clutch is too high. And that was really crappy. Um, I mean, it worked. But it just wasn't elegant. Then I switched to that quarter inch. And now I have finally, five years later, <laughs> seen the light. I really believe everybody should upgrade. Uh, their lead screw. We're using these on the new Simple and you know we had to source them in China but I think we're getting some of these locally while we start this upgrade program until we get them uh, from China. So they are cheap from China and they supply a lot of 3D printer companies and so these things are easier to get today than they were five years ago. Alright so you might go around and just uh, check your screw tightness yeah, those are fine. These are all fine. Okay, so there you go. Uh, 11, under 12 minutes. Um, that's your Acme T8 four start, two millimeter pitch. I think that's right. Um, Acme lead screw in your play, your conversion. Very easy. Don't forget the M code. You have to do that. Don't forget you've been messing around with your mechanicals, so check your offset and calibrate uh, your Z um, before you start printing, be ready to unplug that thing. I don't want you grinding into your bed. Not that it'll kill it, but it'll look bad. So anyway, that's our play. And here's the, my favorite part. You can push it down and up. But that begs one more issue. If you ever, I probably won't with this bot, but if that Delrin, and we actually use a special Delrin, I think it's called AF Delrin. And anyway, it's brown. Um, this is black because these are prototypes. Uh, we're going to use a really nice Delrin that uh, wears better. But if it does loosen up, which it will a little, um, you don't want it after a print just dropping onto your print when it's done. So make sure that ending G code, so you're, you're printing around and then you're done. You don't want to leave your tip over your print. You want to move that print as far out of the way, move that out of the way so that you won't dive that hot end into the top of your print. If, in case, it does start to fall with gravity, which it shouldn't. Uh, and also, I think I mentioned this in one other video, uh, the, what you could do is in the firmware, you'd have to recompile, maybe we can do this for you, but uh, you could have that Z, uh, right now when it moves a Z, it has to be engaged. Now we do use auto leveling, but there's some cases where it doesn't move between layers because maybe your bed is completely flat or at least trammed. Um, I just want to keep that Z engaged even after the print if we can. So anyway, nothing to worry about. Uh, but I'm just, I wanted to mention it because somebody will point it out saying, you don't want it to drop uh, onto the print. No, we don't. <laughs> if it's a problem, uh, we'll show you, we'll do the firmware for you. But anyway, that's your play, your Z, four star, eight millimeter Acme and nut and coupler upgrade. So enjoy.